Welcome to Gemara Academy. In this class, we'll present an overview of the Gemara and Taisvis in Mesech the Shabbos on the Vzayin Amar Aleph and the Vzayin Amar Beis. Let's look at a general outline of this class. So in the Gemara, we presented cases of areas in the Rishas Sarabim that are a Karmelis or a Mokim Ptor, and we also presented the parameters of a Karmelis. So there are two parts. Part number one is areas in the Rishas Sarabim that are either a Karmelis or a Mokim Ptor, and part number two are the parameters of a Karmelis. And in this piece of Gemara, there are three Taisvis. So let's look at the flowchart of the Gemara, and we'll put the Taisvis in it as well as we go along. So let's first start off by looking at the Gemara. We see the flowchart over here, like we'll see, is divided into three parts. The first two parts are the areas in the Rishas Arabim that are either a Karmelis or a Mokim Ptur. And the last, part of, the last part are the parameters of a Karmelis. So on the first piece, we presented two teachings. One teaching is that the area between the pillars and the marketplace is a Karmelis. The other teaching was from a different opinion who said that the benches in this marketplace area, the benches are a Karmelis. And the Gemara explained that according to the opinion that said that between the pillars is a Karmelis, that opinion will certainly hold that the benches are a Karmelis, because the people wouldn't walk on the benches, and they would walk a little bit through the pillars. <clears throat> however, according to the opinion that said that the benches are a Karmelis, he will, however, hold that between the pillars, which is used much more, that area will be a Rishas Sarabim. So that's the first piece of Gemara. It's an area in the Rishas Sarabim that's a Karmelis. The next piece of Gemara is about an area in the Rishas Sarabim that's a Mokim Ptur. We presented a teaching that if there was a brick standing upright in the Rosh Hashanah and somebody threw an item at the brick from a distance of four Amis. So we said if it landed on the face of the brick, if it stuck to the face of the brick, then the person is high for throwing four Amis in Rosh Hashanah However, if it landed on top of the brick, then he's going to be putter since the brick is three Tfachim high. It's considered removed from the Rosh Hashanah and being that the parameters of this brick, the dimensions, were less than four Tfachim by four Tfachim wide, it's a Mokim Ptur. Therefore, the person is putter if it landed on top of the brick. And then the Gemara presented three opinions as to whether there are any cases or any situations where something's considered removed from the Rosh Hashanah just by the very f- mere fact for what it is. In other words, as opposed to a brick that needs a height of three Tfachim to remove it from the Rosh Hashanah, is there anything that is just on its own separated from the Rosh Hashanah because people would never walk on it? Just like an item that's more than three Tfachim high that people don't walk on. And we discussed whether thorns would be considered just removed from the Rosh Hashanah or if not thorns, whether feces. And we presented an opinion that said thorns is already removed, another opinion that said thorns aren't, but feces are, and another opinion that said nothing is, the requirement is always there, it needs to be three tfachim higher than the ground in order to be considered removed from the Rosh Hashanah. And the third and final piece of Gemara was about the parameters of a Carmelis, and we presented two different teachings. One said that the Carmelis needs to be a minimum of four tfachim by four tfachim wide, and the other one said it has to be v'tefeses adasara, which means which explained that the Gemara means that a Karmelis extends up to ten Tfachim. And in this piece of Gemara, we had two discussions. One is, what does Vitefeses Adasara mean? And the Gemara says, My Vitefeses Adasara. And it continues in its question by saying, If you can try to explain to me that it means something, it can't mean that, so what does it mean? And we answered, It means that it extends up to ten Tfachim. And the next piece was you explained, What is it based on? What's the reason a Karmelis has these parameters that it has to be four Tfachim by four Tfachim wide? and it only extends up to 10 Tfachim. So there we have an overview of the three pieces of Gemara in this Sugya. And now we'll look at the Teisvis. So there's actually three Teisvis in, one on each piece. So the first Teisvis is on the part of the Gemara that said that according to the opinion that said, according to the teaching that said that the benches are Karmelis, he will hold that between the pillars is the Rosh Hashanah. So Teisvis over here explains how the area between the pillars can be a Rosh Hashanah if there isn't 16 Amis between one pillar and the next. I want to emphasize over here and point out by each Teisvis how the point of Teisvis is to explain to us the Gemara. So here there's something in the Gemara that needs to be explained. The Gemara told us that according to one opinion, the area between the pillars will be a Rosh Hashanah. And this needs to be explained since we know that one of the requirements for Rosh Hashanah is that the area needs to be 16 Amis wide. So how can that opinion hold? Or how do we understand that opinion that it holds? That between the pillars is a, is a Rosh Hashanah if between one pillar and the next there isn't this area of 16 Amis. So the is explained to us and he gives the understanding for how that can be. The next thesis is on the next piece of Gemara. We said that if somebody threw an item at a, from a distance of four Amis t- towards a brick and the item stuck to the face of the brick, the person is chayev for throwing four Amis in Rosh Hashanah. So Thesis presents two opinions as to where the item is considered at rest and therefore if the brick needs an area of four by four Tfachim. When we said that the person is chayev, where do we see the item being at rest when it's stuck to the face of the brick? Do we say it's resting on the brick which it's stuck to? And then the dim would be the brick needs to be four tfachim by four tfachim wide, as we know that for a hanacha to be considered a proper hanacha, it needs to be 
on an area that's four tefachim by four tefachim wide? Or do we view it that since it's suspended in the air over the ground, it's considered at rest on the ground, and therefore it's not necessary for the brick to have an area of four tefachim by four tefachim wide? So here, once again, Taisus is explaining to us how to understand the Gemara. The Gemara just tells us the din, and Taisus tells us there are two ways of understanding it. Where did it come to rest? And as a result, whether the brick needs to be four tefachim by four tefachim wide or not. And the third and final thesis is on the third piece of the Gemara, where we asked, my vite fesis adasara. What's this requir- What's this parameter of a Carmelist that it's tefesis adasara? And the Gemara completed its question by saying, negating a possible interpretation for what it means. So over here, Tesis presents how Rashi understands this. He asks two questions on him, and then presents his own understanding of this. Tesis presents that the way Rashi reads the Gemara is, we negated the following. If you're going to tell me that with the Fesis Adasar means that a Carmelist is only a Carmelist if it has walls that are 10 Tvachim high. However, if it doesn't have walls that are 10 Tvachim high, it's not a Carmelist. That's what the Gemara negated. Tesis has two questions on this explanation of Rashi, and he presents his own interpretation, which is that <clears throat> what, we can't, what we negated is to say that a Carmelist is only a Carmelist if it has place to build walls that are 10 Tvachim high. And if it doesn't have place to build walls that are 10 Tvachim high, then it's not a Carmelist. So once again, we see how Tesis is explaining to us the Gemara. The Gemara presents an interpretation which we're negating. What is this interpretation? So Tesis presents to us how Rashi understands it. He presents two difficulties on Rashi's explanation, and as a result, he has an alternative understanding of what it is that the Gemara is negating. So it's changing and affecting how we understand what the Gemara is saying over here. So there, there we have the overview of the Gemara, the three pieces. The first two speak about areas in the Rosh Hashanah that are either a Karmelis or a Malkam Tur. And the last piece is the parameters of a of a caramelist, and then we had a tasteless on one of one tasteless on each of the pieces.